What is up, Humanoid Nation? So we got another video from Adam from WWE What Cult. Why the hell do I still call it WWE What Culture? It's Adam from WhatCulture.com YouTube channel. Cause I'm a smart ass. Ding! Anyways, today's video, 10 WWE storylines that horribly backfired. It's only 10? Just 10? I guess you gotta put 10 because like there's more than 10, but hey, we gotta set a limit here. Anyways, let's do this shit. The WWE having a strange relationship. Plan ahead. Long -term yeah, several times. Some things through. Fans who watch Raw might be under the impression that they write it and rewrite it on the night every week because mostly. Sometimes they do, the like, they do through a bunch of stuff, like. Sure, wrestlers get into before the show starts, they rewrite a bunch of shit. Ahead, but you should plan just a little bit. I mean, you should think about things just a tiny bit. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are top 10 WWE storylines that horribly backfired. Number 10, John Cena is shamed for homophobia. So you know how time passes? How when was this? How jokes that might have been okay a decade ago aren't gonna cut it. Think what you like about the increasing scrutiny that joke tellers are under these days. But what were WWE thinking having John Cena, the face of the company, go out there and call The Rock a fairy with a tooth or in his feud with the Miz, say. Oh, well, lad, I wasn't paying attention to his shit because like, was, his, was, his shit was weak. The notebook all reruns of last season's Bachelor. I remember when like CM Punk called man. a fan mm. a fag. Thanks, John Cena. A fan so gave that. whatever he if said. We just looked at the words they were writing for more than no seconds. They might have realized that gay jokes aren't really a thing anymore, at least on global television. Glad caught wind of the comments, and the WWE were forced to issue a groveling apology. Number nine, the big show turns heel, then face, then heel, then face. Why does anyone trust the big show? The man This is why no one gives a real. fuck about Internet big show anymore, because counted up to twenty one So many times he's turned does... big show's WWE career. That's one point three one two five turns a year. In two thousand eight, wow. in one night, returning to the company after leaving as a heel, turning babyface to a big pop, then immediately. And then he cried on like TV. Mysterio. He's flown between good A giant and cried on TV to get invested in the giant quizzling. When the big show weeps giant tears when being forced to do evil things by the authority. I don't want to do it, Wells. I'm a good guy. I'm Captain Insano. Number eight, exploiting Latino heat. When Eddie Guerrero died in 2005, it was devastating. He was one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that was bullshit. And it was what it was. Like it was complete and utter bullshit. The best way they could by cashing in on a dead man's legacy for cheap heat. So cash in on his death Eddie died for Randy months on end. Low rider and later claimed that Eddie was in hell. Rey Mysterio won the Royal Rumble for Eddie. Which he shouldn't have won in the first place since he's not a Guerrero. Chavo is, but I can... He mentioned Eddie. But no one will take Chavo seriously as a world champion, but Rey champion was not that great either. Without his uncle being mentioned. Now sure, Eddie Guerrero knew how to play the game and probably wouldn't have minded his death being used to further some storylines. But after a while, it began to create real backlash with Mysterio getting yeah, terrible reactions from uncomfortable fans all as he was supposed to be the plucky underdog baby face number you only got to tell because Eddie died turning out to be a botch monkey made of glass wasn't technically WWE's fault but they didn't make it easy for the faceless one introduced with all the hype in the world and set up as the all the hype in the world and he blows it in his first match throughout Mexico as Mystico was going to be a big deal in the WWE and then he botched the entrance for his first match now the WWE can be blamed for not training Sin Cara enough in the WWE style which is very different to the fun boy and man fuck the WWE style, style but I get their point the that made everyone look like they were fighting in a Turkish brothel. The fans rejected the character, turning him into an international joke. Number six, the brawl for all. Hey! Uh, <laughs> oh, the brawl for all, really? The testosterone to the point that even their beards have beards. It's not supposed so to be uh, real. The brawl for back then they said like, oh, we're not gonna other, like have it fixed. And they wanted it fixed to have Dr. Death. death. Dark. Win that They're damn thing. Legalized bar they blew up in their face when Bart Gunn won it. Mid-carders womp on each other like pissed up bears. And they gave Dr. Death the money too. Steve Williams was supposed to win the tournament and use it as momentum to take it to a feud with Steve Austin. But after being crushed and injured by Bart Gunn, his credibility was shot and he was released months later. Then, after winning the tournament, Gunn himself was humiliated by Butterbean at Butterbean. 15 and suffered a similar fate. No one benefited from the brawl for all, except perhaps people with a fetish for bum fights. 
Number five, million dollar mania. In Fuck! Drive up oh, that was such a waste of time. Give away money live on Raw to viewers watching at home. People would register their telephone numbers and since it's, it's my birthday. Offer people cash. Good What's for you. Go wrong. Well, lots. Since Vince McMahon is older than most trees, and working a phone got tricky. He would face wrong numbers, drop calls, long silences, while the fans almost clenched themselves inside out with awkward. Wait, that was actually legit. So they were just giving away. That even makes it more funnier. I don't actually think Vince McMahon would actually give money away. On top of Vince McMahon, he then screamed, "I can't feel my legs." Number four, fake razor and fake diesel. Anyone who thought this was a good idea should be punched, then made to watch their loved ones be punched, and then be punched by their loved ones. Scott Hall and Ash went to WCW in 1996. Although they weren't calling themselves Razor Ramon and Diesel, names owned by the WWF, they sure as hell acted like their old characters and had huge successes in the process. Vince sued, then thought, what the hell, screw those guys, I'll just get a new Diesel and Razor. Like Doctor Who, the characters apparently regenerated and emerged on Raw being played <laughs> by two new wrestlers, Rick Bogner as fake Razor Big Titan. and Glenn Jacobs, yep, Kane as fake Diesel. Why does the gimmick couldn't Kane's glasses look like Penn from Penn and Teller? For those of you who are too young to remember Penn and Teller, look it up. Number three, Google that shit. Fun. Now we've already discussed this in the Undertaker video, but it bears mentioning again. It was brutal. Brutal. Oh my god, a song versus Taker. Terrorist, honest character. This thing, this could have been something. But timing, WWE, just the timing of it. To be event. honest, had been circling disaster for a while with the angle. First of all, Hassan wasn't Arabic, he was Italian, which raises its own problems. Second of all, Hassan was a man bringing up reasonable points about the demonization of an entire religious culture based on actions of fringe maniacs within it. Very good points, but trade, then the bombing happened in London and third of all, his push went to hell. Looking masks, men, well, even before then, because he was a cockney motherfucker. To end badly. Hassan's career was ruined, and he never left again. Number two, Boo Tisa. Anyone in WWE who claims they planned the way back. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. So let's start this where, like, Muhammad Hassan was. Anyways, let's start this shit again. Number two, Boo Tista. Anyone in WWE who claims they the planned the Royal Rumble shit yeah. from the start is a damn liar who will go to hell for lying. Here's what they actually planned. Batista returns looking out of shape and wearing bad hats. He wins the Royal Rumble, he beats Orton at WrestleMania, and uses the belt to promote Guardians of the Galaxy. The fans love it. Cake and coffee for everyone. N no. The fans sort of no. have their heart set on someone else. When it transpired that Daniel Bryan wasn't even in the Royal Rumble, the fans burned the whole thing down with Batista inside. They essentially turned him heel, calling him Bootista, and rebooked the WrestleMania main event through sheer power of collective whinging. <laughs> Thankfully, WWE learned their lesson, and the next Royal Rumble was received with universal acclaim. No, it wasn't. Number one, it wasn't. the beast beats the streak. If you're going to do it, for God's sake, do it right. They kind of did do it right, didn't they? No one no saw it coming. Happen, happened, and it was surprising as fuck. His undefeated streak at WrestleMania. And plus, Taker wanted real Brock to, to wait. No, an ironically treasured thing in the pro I wrestling industry. I forget what, how it was. Tough, but so does daylight. It made the Undertaker look like an old man robbing his WrestleMania 31 match of any real drama. And the man that was supposed to receive the rub from beating the guy who beat the streak was such poison to the fans that for two years in a row, the WrestleMania main event had to be rebooked. Lesnar's still around so the angle might still pay off, but considering that Brock was always going to be hard to beat and a big name draw, what did the most shocking WrestleMania moment in history actually achieve? And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it. You still got a minute with a fucking surprising thing, really? Follow me on Twitter here. Brock Lesnar being the Undertaker. No one saw it coming. It was quite the shit that happened. It's like, yeah, man, people were surprised as fuck. Oh my god, Eddie Guerrero dying, the months and months of that stupid shit going on left and right. I could go on a rant about it for so long, like, there's so much wrong with that shit. First of all, using Eddie's name in that, just to boost ratings. And the fact that Rey Mysterio only won the title because Eddie died. And the fact that, and why didn't Chavo get that honor instead of Rey, because, you know, Chavo is actually a Guerrero. Because it doesn't make sense. What? Because you're watching this shit and they're saying like, Chavo telling Ray, like, do it for the Guerreros. You are a Guerrero to me. He really isn't. He's just best friends with the guy. Chavo was the actual Guerrero. He should have been in that spot, but to make it, I, is it just me that thinks this? Because like, 
Ray winning it just because Eddie died and saying, like, do it for the Guerrero. And then Chavo says that shit to him. And then later on, Chavo turns heel on Ray, saying that you're not a Guerrero. Then why the fuck are you telling him that you're a Guerrero? Because the writing and bullshit and the bookers and all that shit. I could go on and on. But what are your guys' storylines that have horribly backfired? What do you guys think? Anyways, take it easy, guys. Humanoid Nation. Sorry, fuck that shit up. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid freak out. Bye. Vivir así.